Good morning. Uh, today we are going to speak to Dr. Sias Tutesi, a senior lecturer in the Department of Education. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Uh, Doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Um, okay, I registered and started doing PhD in 2012, therefore around the years 2012 up to 2015. There was a massive increase of postgraduate students recruited from Kwakwa and the surrounding areas, including KZN. And then I graduated in 2013. Therefore, after graduation, getting PhD students was not the postgraduate getting postgraduate students was not a problem because we had quite a number of students that needed supervision. So I think that created space for me to start supervising the students and also getting an initial. So we do need to keep up, I mean, okay students from both Free State and KZN that actually inducted me or introduced me into research. Thank you so much, Doctor. And what are you currently working on? Um, basically, I'm working on two aspects. Uh, one is reflecting on my teaching. In that case, I'm actually influenced by CTL because uh, there are some programs organized by CTL. And then in those programs, one will get the practice of teaching and assessment. So that's one. The second one is one teaching practice. Now, with the new PQM in the faculty of education, we are focusing on teaching schools and uh, something like teaching laboratories. Because of that, not only are we doing a a sort of community engagement, but the main thing is that to, to do it in a scholarly way so that you also do research on it. So it is something that is actually um, still um, um, being cooked, but we have already, I've already started doing research on it. So those are two main aspects that I'm working on teaching practice and reflecting on my teaching practices in assessment. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then coming to <coughs> Community engagement. We know that education plays a major role in human life. So, are there any strategies that are put into place to ensure that students are engaged in their communities to play a role as community leaders? No thanks for the question. Um, currently, we are partnering with Agape Foundation. Uh, we do mainly take our foundation based students. They assist students that, I mean, they're not that at home, right? they are basically foundation phase, meaning that from grade R, grade 1, and then up to um, standard 6, grade 4, somewhere there. So, those are mainly just a primary school kids. Then we use our students to assist them in doing their, their homeworks. So, uh, on Fridays, we um, pass them from the university to a the foundation. That's one. I think the second one that we are going to work on will be this one of these schools where we, are, we want to partner with a school and then look at the impact that we may have. So, in that regard, it's a more of a mutual benefit in that the community will be benefiting from, um, from us and then our students as well will be exposed to. Um, the real life uh, um, the scenarios, and then as researchers, we will also have an opportunity to do research on, on, on yeah, maybe the whole project. So, we are anticipating that surely soon or so, by 2024, or later on, the by 2025, we should take the count. But currently, we are conceptualizing it, and therefore, we are aiming at sub putting a submission so that the faculty structures and the academic committee. Uh, approve the our submission. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then what role can technology play in the field of education? Um, I think I mean, as I said I'm working on, 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 on the practices of teaching. Among the things that one looks at is about not only um, a more teacher centered approach in terms of uh, preparing pre service teachers, but rather also using technology. On the other hand um, we may also use technology to make our, our life easier. 
such as, for example, if I'm setting a, a, a set of and paper, and I also use technology to design a rubric so that I can edit it from my perspective. So, not only can technology be abused uh, by my students, but as lecturers as well, it can also make our life to be easy. Because with that in mind, then I can also use the system to, to map what I have already set. So, I think that in that we can also, I mean, assist in that, that, that regard. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, one of the graduate attributes uh, of UFS student is critical thinking. How is education playing that role to ensure that students are critical thinkers? Um, I think with COVID and COVID-19 created that space in that when we had to set question papers, we had to set question papers, bearing in mind that I mean, students do have um, study guides, they do have any other assistance that, 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 that they could need. In that sense, we had to set questions in such a way that they'd have to reflect not only just um, getting answers made from the, the, the module guide, but now um, uh, post COVID 19, some of the assessments that we designed during the COVID 19 are still being very used currently. In fact, we are improving on, on them. So I think we, uh, I would rather say, that's one of the credit attributes that I would rather say the faculty administration is contributing a lot towards this achievement. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? Um, I think I would rather say, because I'm interested in the teaching schools, as I've already said, which is something like teaching our countries. Um, in the context of the northeastern part of the free state, that has, I mean, not every state that has been done in that space. So, I'm hoping that in the next year or two years, one day, uh, teaching schools take off the ground, at least we'll be able to contribute a lot to that and have a research that takes the context into consideration. Because with teaching schools, um, most of the things that one reads in, in the South African context, be from UJ or UJ or the rest of of Mpumala. So we also need some of them to be from UFS. The teaching schools may also get some from Finland and so on and the Netherlands. But now we also need some from the Northeastern part of the free state from UFS in short. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. We see that collaboration plays a major role here in education. Thank you. And then Coming back to your work, your writing, uh, is there any particular school of thought or perspective that influences your writing? Yeah, I think um, the critical theory uh, plays play in it me here from the history of that. Because the critical theory is pro marginalized schools. Because of that, I normally try to find ways in which voices that have that have not been heard, they try to find space to be heard as well. So, um, meaning that getting, uh, getting both sides of the story for me uh, remains key, remains key. Uh, whether something, even if what someone has been said from an authoritative, uh, by uh, someone in an authoritative position, but I also want to hear how do other people down there feel about it. Okay. For example, currently I've got a student who is working on um, a master student. She was interested in, in, in the COVID-19 um, police. I know that it has been, uh, for now, um, been suspended, if I can put it that way. But I had a student who was working on it, actually, who was actually looking at how student felt about, about its application. I would have said that in that sense, to understand that there are basically two groups, I would say. Students, and the, the policy gets applied to the students. It actually affects all of us, but one also tries to get feelings or uh, perspectives from, from students. Yeah, so I said critical theory is the one that really clouds my, my thinking and how I do things because I'm pro in marginalized school. And then, what message can you say to aspiring researchers? Um, I will encourage them to colonize spaces, meaning that we're going to areas. 
I think it took me time to realize that how, uh, uh, how uh, in academia this world gets split. You need to, to have a niche area. Unfortunately, it took me time to realize that one. So I don't want uh, some young uh, academics to take uh, most of their time um, doing research in various spaces or focusing on different different aspects or areas rather have a niche area. So that would be my message to them. Okay, thank you so much. And then, from your understanding, uh, decolonization of curriculum, what is your viewpoint on that? Um, I think my take there would be. Oh no, I support the idea. Let me start. Yes, I support the idea. Whereby we also include where, I mean, the writings from, from African scholars, I think that's number one, and also take the context into consideration. Do you remember what I said? I said critical theory plays a major role in terms of how I think. Now, most of the writings uh, that we have were just uh, actually from Europe. So, rather uh, getting African scholars, taking the context into consideration, for me it's more, I mean, it, that will be important. So, I, I, I am. And pro uh, decolonization, that's what I can say. Um, um, although in some spaces we also need some, some ways of, um, what is it, not moving too extreme, too extreme in any way. Extreme. Perhaps one example that I can say would be um, I normally look at the graduations in Bloomington, the graduations in Guadalupe. So, uh, each of these ceremonies would normally have its own. Its own um, Unique, 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 unique vibe inside, and then Corpus got his own unique vibe as well. Um, but there is a possibility that um, um, it may not be doing it all well with any of the groups as well. But my point would be, it is good that we take the context into consideration. So, so non is dominated by Africans, dominated mostly to and so and also other I mean, uh, groups as well. Because of that, it's graduation, like the graduation functions of the Cobra campus would normally have a particularly unique uh, way in which it gets, gets conducted, which may not be similar to the community. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? I think being in leadership positions, um, I also try to find ways in which I keep a balance between what the university uh, requires and the, the context. Remember, the thinking tank of this institution is in Mufati. So, based on the main decision making powers in Mufati. So, each time when I have attended any meeting in Mufati, I need to find ways in which what uh, has been concluded or what has been agreed upon gets implemented on the public campus by taking the context into consideration. Because if well, I forget about the corporate context and blindly implement any decisions that has been taken, chances are that uh, uh, we may not succeed in implementing such. Okay, to be honest, on the corporate campus, the faculty education is the biggest one. Because of that, anything that I need to implement, I also need to take into consideration what will be its impact to the entire university. So if the faculty education does well, my line manager, Professor Stoll, goes to the Cobra campus, generally smiles. But if there's something wrong in the Cobra education, then it just the campus comes to a standstill. So my concern is more on leadership, finding ways in which we uh, keep a balance between everything so that any decision that we take, take uh, decision that we take and implement, uh, take the context into consideration. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then I have learned that in leadership you have to take also cognizance about the context that you have not, you are not only going to align with what has been said but also to include those that are on the other side. Uh, we thank you for your time, Doctor. No, thanks very much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. I feel honored to be with you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.